5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's nightly media roundup. I'm Roland Boyden, and this is 5.45 Live. On deck tonight, we're going to talk about Bernie's trip to BMAC over the weekend. We'll find out more about that. Uh, see what the deal with the new diesel generator and uh, the recommendation for a CPG at Vermont Yankee is. Uh, and we'll also track uh, death with dignity or right to life, end of life legislation as it's been known uh, all this past year. The fight and the Senate and the House, Shumlin signed it over Monday. All that and more. Remember, we're going to do it all in 15 minutes or less. So make sure you stick with us right here on 545 Live. Because of the way you're seated, it's going to make it look as if I'm sort of watching a slow-moving tennis game as, uh, as I proceed. The rest of you are welcome to listen in, but um, mostly I want to congratulate y'all. Um, this is an awfully big deal. Welcome back to this May 21st, 2013 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden. I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news. And graduation season is upon us as we look at footage from last year's Marlboro College graduation, which included words of advice from 350.org founder, author, activist Bill McKibben. The tradition of modest celebs continued this year at Marlboro graduation with none other than Governor Shumlin addressing the now BA endowed masses, telling the graduates um, that uh, quote, key individuals and moments in your life will make all the difference. Now, uh, he did uh, get a full uh, video up there on YouTube as well for you to check out. All right, moving on, Shumlin's in our next story as well, and for that we go back to the script. After more than a year of tracking Vermont's proposed end-of-life legislation on 545 Live, it looks like we can bring the story to a close, as yesterday Shumlin became the first governor in the nation to sign into law a lethal prescription for terminally ill patients experiencing extreme levels of pain. The bill, once dubbed Death with Dignity, or Right to Life, and known by its opposition as Physician-Assisted Suicide, was introduced in Montpelier this year by Wyndham County Senator Jeanette White and sponsored by Wyndham District 4 Rep Mike Merwicki. And while the bill took a near-fatal gutting in the Senate in February, which left the intricate legislation stripped of more than 13 pages of safeguards, the House managed to restore most of the bill's original provisions, uh, and with them, its momentum. Culminating yesterday in Vermont's move to become just the third state to adopt such a law after Washington and Oregon, and the first to do it through its legislature. Now, we've got a clip tracking this past year of death with dignity or end-of-life legislation in the House, uh, both on and off the uh, Senate and House floor. Let's take a look. If you rename this, if you didn't call it uh, physician-assisted suicide, but if you emphasize death with dignity, mm -hmm. then we would reconsider. What this uh, provides is for a, a terminally ill person uh, with six months to live to have the physician prepare a lethal medication in Christian theology, this assumption is based on Genesis chapter 1, which tells how God gave to the first man and the first woman the freedom to make their own decision. My main concern is that people have control over that very last moment of their life as opposed to... And so I'm going to reflect that because I don't like the way it sounds here hastening. One of the things we've heard, especially out of Oregon, is that the end-of-life choices are not made because of pain, but they're made because of quality of life, of dignity, of I don't have full control of myself anymore. I think it really is a ethical conflict for a doctor or a nurse to aid a patient to die rather than to make them comfortable and help them to live. One in 10 of those who pass all of the criteria and, and have the medication in hand uh, that use it. I think it's a personal right. I think it's a hugely private right. This is the kind of issue that does, it's very personal. But I don't think that that should um, stop us from giving those persons the ability to make those choices for themselves. 
All right, we're going to check in with Vermont U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders now. He was in town over the weekend to host Danish Ambassador Peter Tesco Jensen for a talk on the European nation's unique take on health care and education, something Vermont's U.S. Senator hopes will serve as a model for America in the coming years. In this country today, 50 million people have no health insurance, and we spend far and away more per capita on health care than the people of any other nation. But we can hear about a country in which when you go to the doctor, you don't take out your wallet. Go to the hospital, you don't take out your wallet. All right, we'll move on and talk about Vermont Yankee. What would a 545 Live be if we didn't check in there? At one point in time, Vermont Yankee would have turned to the Vernon Hydroelectric Dam for power in the case of an electrical failure. Uh, but as of September 1st, uh, that option will no longer be available, something that's prompted the plant's owner's energy to seek a certificate of public good from the state for the installation of a diesel backup generator. A request uh, the investigating hearing officer Lars Bung Jensen ruled this week would promote the general good of the state. Now at an NRC open forum this month, Vermont Yankee operations manager Derek Jones explained the plant's core system using some creative visuals. So this is the, uh, the reactor building. <laughs> Um, it's where the uh, vessel is, um, it's where we make the, uh, the steam to uh, provide uh, uh, over to the turbine to produce the electricity, which is what I think Mitch uh, just spoke about before. So you get the two, two separate buildings here, and just a mock-up of, uh, of both. Diesel generator or not, the state's public service board has yet to rule on Vermont Yankees' overall certificate of public good, a requisite for continued operation upheld in federal court last year, even after state legislation set to close the plant was overturned. All right, we're going to head back into the stories here for a moment and uh, talk about uh, perhaps slightly less controversial than uh, Vermont Yankee, but controversial nonetheless. Moving on, a proposal from Renaud Inc. to address a gravel shortage uh, in the towns of Putney and Dummerston by opening a new pit near the Hidden Acres campground off Route 5 has received the state's blessing, as this week Vermont's District 2 Environmental Commission joined the Dummerston Development Review Board in approving the plan. And while their Act 250 permit is accompanied by some restrictions on hours of operation uh, and blasting, the commission did determine that the new gravel pit would not, quote, cause or result in detriment to public health, safety, or general welfare. Now, at the proposal's Act 250 hearing earlier this year, project manager Corey Friese of the Brattle Row Base design firm Stevens & Associates took the opportunity to explain on site the details of keeping operations at the new pit safe, even quiet. This is the site visit for the proposed gravel pit hearing. This is strictly for information only. This is kind of like show and tell. There were a lot of appropriate concerns um, and the project was significantly revised um, in order to do our best uh, to, to mitigate those concerns to the best of our ability. All right, moving on, we'll check in with the surrounding towns in BCTV's area. Vernon, Guilford, Dummerston, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica all supplement content from uh, right here in Brattleboro. We get municipal meetings in every one of those towns and a Leland and Gray school board meeting in there as well, courtesy of our field producer, Rich Melanson, who's also been slipping me a few notes on the side so I can get you some clips. And today, our uh, seven-town summary takes us to Townsend, where last night's regularly scheduled select board meeting saw lengthy discussion over a certificate request for a private bridge, a decision say some members of the board could have implications beyond the initial project. Before the fire department put the town at risk for having a, a truck drive over a bridge and make it unusable uh, and potentially damage a fire truck. We wanted to, we had some discussion as to this and we wanted to put this letter out to the town residents. All right, well, it's become customary on our midweek edition of 545 Live to do a little shameless uh, BCTV promotion, talk about new programs coming up this week. And for that, we uh, launch into our sweet new split screen and take a look at that. We're going to start with uh, hospice home care tips from uh, hospice series producer Greg McAllister. Uh, this program includes Brattleboro Area Hospice Volunteer and VNA nurse Chris McDermott uh, discussing home care tips with other members of the hospice organization. Let's take a look. Some people can walk. You know, they, it's good exercise to walk as they're moving around their house. It's easier to back up than it is to go forward if you're just using your feet. It takes a lot of 
power even for me. That shows tomorrow and Saturday at 10.30 a.m. on BCTV Channel 8. And as we move on in the stories here, be sure to check out uh, a short video montage with clips from BCTV's past, courtesy of longtime producer Carolyn Peck. These are major productions as they take place away from our studio setting and require and rely on a lot of volunteer participation. It takes several hours of choosing, moving, arranging, rewiring and piecing together equipment, checking lines, running cables, all this to bring these on the air to our viewers. That also shows Wednesday and Saturday uh, on Channel 8 at 11.50 a.m. You can find the information on our uh, channel lineups for both this here Channel 8, our public channel, and our government and education sister channel, Channel 10, uh, as well as streaming for both channels and uh, video on demand for all local programs all at brattleborotv.org. Get the TV in there, brattleborotv.org. All right. That's a full lid for me, everybody. Thanks for checking in with this midweek edition of 545 Live. We'll be back Friday right here on this Channel 8 at 545 p.m. for another live broadcast. In the meantime, stay safe out there. Thanks to everybody that makes 545 Live tick the way it does at BCTV staff and volunteers. And to you all out there who watch 545 Live, thus making it worth producing. Thanks. Night, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Hello. Good night. Should I get my makeup? <laughs> <laughs>